again guys, welcome. We're having a traditional Portuguese breakfast, a traditional cafe. We think it's traditional. We tried to pick the most traditional one we could. So we're having prawn rissoles. I don't know how you translate rissol. It's like a little fried pastry thing. And uh, we're having a Portuguese, Portuguese croissant. It's like a glazed croissant thing. And I'm having a milk and coffee. You're having a, you're having an Americano. And obviously there's loads of dramas going on because it's, it's still early and everything is still starting up, so. How is? Ale. Mm, Ale? Um. Ale. <laughs> this glaze sticks to your fingers. Oh. So you have to lick your so fingers. So I'm going to use one of these. Yeah. Uh -huh. But it's like, you know, brioche kind of, but it's like more dense than typical. So is this the croissant thing you were thinking of? It's not the one with the chocolate, is it? Something different? Yeah, that's the one. Oh. Like the one I was getting in Poland. Oh, so right. Oh, okay, okay. Because we saw one with chocolate yesterday that you were saying looks really good as well. Yeah, but I don't think it's some variation. This is like the most basic. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, I'm ready to try it. Take on your advice. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can avoid. So it's just inside. It's just like a brioche. It's a croissant made of brioche dough. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. You know what it feels like? It feels like it's supposed to... Wow. <laughs> the world when is in, your oyster. When in Paris. So the second stage of the breakfast is this funny semicircle moon thing here, which is called of Rissol. Inside is prawns. Could be a range of things. Could be spring onion, uh, some cream, some herbs, onion. You can have them hot and cold. We're not having them hot this morning, but uh, we're going to bite into it and see what it looks like inside. Mm. Mm. That is a good way to start the day. But you can only have like two or three of them, otherwise you can <laughs> I don't know how many churches and cathedrals um, Porto has, but it seems to just have an unlimited amount. All right, so we're gonna try and go inside this church. Because it looks insane. I see for it. What are the chances we go in and there's like some sort of se yeah, they usually ceremony going on? Yeah. Oh, it's not just a mass, no, no, no. Oh, it's a mass, I don't know anything it about like it. It said like there was a whole schedule, like when. This house is pretty. It's a pretty, pretty and pretty abandoned, yeah. So, I 
feel like the street that we're on is maybe a bit more affluent area of Porto because every house down this street is like pretty impressive in its own way. I mean, other than like this kind of place that we've got up here, but if you look at like this building and you look at like this building down here and even like all of these buildings that go up this side. So I don't know, maybe this is, maybe this is like where the wealthy people live or something like that. But it's a strange, there's a strange juxtaposition with like the graffiti and things on the, the brutalist style stuff like behind me compared to the amazingly like regal profile of this kind of building and like all the design and craftsmanship that went into it and then when you compare it with that it's quite strange but if you look at the street as a whole it's quite a beautiful street this is kind of what I mean when I say it reminds me of like London or Edinburgh or something. Because take a look at this. Just the way the pavement is, the street looks, everything. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't compare places to other places, but it does kind of remind me of London sometimes. I think it's just a similar era of like building. But wow, so many cool tiles. I mean, look at the tiles on this building here. And like almost every single building and house that has some kind of tile or special brickwork has a different style, a different color, a different pattern, something else to it. So uh, yeah, really interesting if you're into that kind of thing. Um, I like all kinds of design stuff anyway. So look, even here now on the other side of the road, there's another house with a completely different style. Nice one. Really nice one. And they have a kitty, so. Yeah. Oh. That's how they get you in in the first place. Yes. Cats bring the attention. Kitties, like, they have a special name for these, right? A special name for these cats? No, for like people who like take, get your attention to get you in. Oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. Little Diti, little Diti. Little Diti, yeah. Yeah, I was oh, there. Oh, there's a motorcycle shop. Oh, cool. I was telling my, uh, she's, that's it. she's more obsessed with motorbikes than I am. So we stopped for some bites to eat in this like, idyllic little picturesque park. And we're going to try something that is apparently very typical Porto food. But I don't really know what it's called. We'll find out what it's called. But it's a crazy looking sandwich that basically looks like a pizza folded over. <laughs> no disrespect. <laughs> it's probably not a pizza. But here it is going to be unveiled to you live and exclusive <laughs> whoa okay oh okay because so he slides oh that's yeah. a, that's just a half of it guys it weighs about like half a kilo yes like. <laughs> oh ready <laughs> cheers <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my god, tram! Oh, there's trams. Yeah. I want to go on one. We do. Follow that tram. Mm -hmm. Run. So, I'm really not sure what's inside, but it feels like tomato, some good ham, Pepper. peppers, yeah, cheese. some cheese, I think. Onion. Onion. The bread is really nice. Anyway, you can't taste it, so I don't know why I'm trying to fucking explain it. This is a traditional sandwich, apparently. That's it. <laughs> I made a mess. If you know what it's called, comment down below. 